The Meddlesome Meeples present The Quest Report with Matt and Richard. So we thought we'd uh, talk about one of the games that we picked up at the Expo, we played Mm -hmm. at the Expo this week, and that's a game called Biblios. Now, Biblios is a game, it's a short game, only about... 20-30 20-30 minutes long yeah. for two to four players and the objective of this is to be the one with the best um, documents the best sort of monastery library yeah by the one you mean the monk who yeah. has the best library. because each each player is the head of a monastery trying to get the best and the rarest documents so the way that you do that is by collecting documents from five different categories and they're just essentially colour coded they are different kinds of text and things but yeah. effectively all you're looking at here is the colours on the cards mm. and the number on the cards to represent the card they value they do have general themes don't they they like, do the orange ones are kind of like scrolls yeah. I mean I quite mm. like the theme but I think some people might find it off putting but it's kind of irrelevant because the game itself is so it's it's themed but it's not thematic all oh. you're doing is you're trying to get the best hand of cards but the what, artwork's very nice though isn't it it is it is nice, and I like the way that the box is like a little book that you open. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I quite like that. There's a couple of games like that, and I always always like that sort of thing. And um, so basically, during the game, on your turn, you're going to be drawing some cards, aren't you, from a deck? Yep. You're going to be drawing, say you're playing four players, five cards. Mm-hmm. Um, if it was three players, it would be four cards. And what you do is you have to, you pick one of those cards to keep yourself... You put one into an auction pile for later, yeah. And the other three, you put you'd put face out for the other three players to take. But you can only draw and look at a card one at a time, and you have to look and decide what you're going to do with it as you draw it and look at it. So you mm. might draw a card and think, you know, this one looks okay, but I don't know if there's going to be a better card to come later or yeah. if there's a worse card to come. So it's kind of it's like half like drafting mm. in a way, but you get to decide. You kind of get dibs on one of them, don't you? Yeah. Basically, but only one. Yeah, and you can't when you you've drawn all five. You can't then go. Actually, I want to change this around. You've, no. you've got to put one away to the auction pile. You've got to take one, and you've got to put three out. All done one at a time, and that's actually probably the most interesting part of the game for me. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, you kind of going mm. around the table doing that. And once the decks run out. Um, you're then going to be going through the auction pile mm. one card at a time, aren't you? And then you can bid. Now, there are other text and document cards, which are the five categories we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. So, sort of brown, blue, green, ochre, and red. But then there are also gold cards in values of one, two, or three. So, yeah. during the auction phase, what you're going to. Money gold. Yeah, money yeah. gold. So, during the auction phase, what you're then going to do is you're going to be revealing a card one at a time. And you're going to bid on that card. And if it's a document card, you're going to bid on it using gold from the cards you've got. Yeah. And if it's a um, gold card, you're going to bid on it using cards, which we typically put in face down, don't you? So other people don't yeah. see. It. But if it, say you bid four on a gold card, you'd be discarding four cards, which would be they could be other gold cards, they could be document cards face down aren't they so yeah. you don't have to reveal what you give away yeah. just it's just numbers of cards really but one of the cards that you'll be drawing and you, you play it as soon as you acquire it is to, is like a bishop type card isn't it and what that <laughs> yeah. does it's a guy is it means... shouting normally from a <laughs> yeah. pulpit and um, that allows you to modify because there's five dice one for each colour and they all start off at three and with those bishop cards you can either raise the value of a dice by one deduct a value of a dice by one but then there's a few cards that will let you raise two cards by one or one by two or raise um, one and, and deduct one and that kind of thing yeah and they're quite interesting so the values of the sets that you've got will change at the end the person that's got the most value on in the cards will score the va- the number that's on the dice basically this is the score that you are playing for mm. in each category and I just I quite like these dice they're quite big and like I say, they're all in the different colours. Mm. When I first saw this, I assumed that we would be rolling these die, dice. It's just nice to have dice that we're not rolling. And yeah. they are proper, they're just normal D6s. But we are just using them to indicate a number, aren't we? Mm. And you just turn them around to kind of, like, if it's a, it starts out as a mm. three, and if you get one to raise a number, then you just turn it around and find the four and then put it back down. So basically, 
if you are trying to collect um, the cards, like books from a certain colour, then it's in your interest to try and raise that particular mm. dice die. And, and like, maybe when we lower first played the it, ones that you're not collecting as well to yeah, make them less valuable. I thought it was interesting when we first played it. You really bluffed us, didn't you? Because <laughs> you kept raising green, and we thought, oh, you've got loads of green. But he was actually just trying to distract us, and it, you, you were, it worked. The bluff worked, but it did nothing to help you win. <laughs> <laughs> I'd successfully achieved my aim of trying to trick everybody to think I was collecting uh, green, and I think actually yeah. I was collecting uh, red and blue or something yeah. like that. Um, but everyone was then trying to spend their dice to lower the green, and yeah, that's what, that's what I was trying to... Do, so so somebody else were... won green in the end. Yeah, and they got loads of points. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I didn't win. Kind of <laughs> yeah, but like, I love the way there's more to do in a game than just out and out try to win. There's just mm. little cool little ways you can trick people and stuff. And I thought that was really. Good. And what was interesting as well, because obviously the there's different values on the cards, but. Um, there were ones that people just weren't bothering to go for particularly so like somebody won several points from just having like a couple of brown cards that they hadn't really been trying to collect oh yeah you can win with one card Mm. of uh, of that colour if nobody else has got any because some of them there isn't many of is there which way does it go is it the Brown and blue, there wasn't many of. I can tell it? you. Um, it's oh, on, it says it on it's there. Got a, you well, we don't need all the numbers. The just which one doesn't have many? Um, I think it's red, isn't it? Red's got the least. Red's got a lot of low value cards. Yeah, that might whereas be. Whereas the brown and the blues tend to have more higher value numbers. Um, now, when you are playing a game, you're going to discard some of these cards yeah, now randomly. Some, yeah, some of these cards are randomly not going to be there, so you can't just look at the number of books that exist yeah and think oh well i've got several of these so there's going to be no more it's like <laughs> there could be no more mm. or there could be a, a lot more you, you just don't know which ones have been left in the box mm. for that particular game so that adds a nice little uh, unpredictable element to it there the other thing i like about it is the auction phase as you as you were talking about where you mm. use gold cards to buy the leftover books basically i like the fact that when a gold card turns up in that phase you are using cards to buy the gold. Mm. So it's basically, it's both buying and selling books in a way. Well, it's and, kind I know of it doesn't have to be books, but yeah. Because for me, when I've played, because we've played this a few times now, and in mm. some of the games I've played, it completely changed my strategy during the auction phase. Mm. Because I thought, okay, well, I've got maybe a good hard card in uh, blue, for, for example. But then I saw other people outbidding me on blue and thought, well, I can't afford to spend any more. Yeah. And now I'm probably not going to. Ha- these aren't going to be as valuable to me because I'm sure someone else has got more. Right, and then I've yeah. traded them into gold for gold to try and buy another colour. Yeah. To improve my chances with something else. So the, the auction phase can change what you're doing, and that you know I like that kind of thing in a game. Mm. Um, I as you, as we said, I like the uh, the the theme of it because I like old documents. Um, yeah. I like the the way that the the box represents a book. The cards are quite nice. It's just a nice light twenty to thirty minute game for me that yeah. I could probably pull out and play quite happily any time. Yeah, I mean it was our friend uh, Ryan who mm. bought this at the expo, and then one of the evenings we would not quite late, hadn't we? That yeah. night, and we um, we were playing in the hotel bar at midnight, I think, and we yeah we we'd been to get this uh, out. hanging around in the room, hadn't we? And then we just went down to the bar and. Uh, yeah, and Ryan just explained to us how to play Biblios, and it, it didn't take too long, did it? And it was no. just nice to play just at that bar table. So mm. it's a nice game that, like, it's a little bit counterintuitive to learn at first, I think. But after a few rounds, people get to know it. But then people need to know how to do the kind of half drafting, half uh, just choosing cards bit mm. at the start. And then they need to learn again for the auction bit, mm. which um, is very different again. But I think by the time you've played it once, then you have a oh, yeah. very good grasp of how to do it. You only ever need to know this once to know basically all there is to know about yeah. the game. And then after that, it's just deciding which sets you're going to try and go for. Um, what, trying to work out when you're drawing those cards, which ones you think are, are going to be good to keep, which ones not. I mean, sometimes it's you just keep the one that you think, well, this isn't a bad card. Yeah. Because you don't necess- if you could put it down, someone else could get it, and you could end mm. up with a bit of a dud later. But it's kind of like a, a push your luck 
style element in that mechanic yeah. so that you don't know if if you take if you pass up on a half decent card you might get a better one later and I've done that and I've ended up getting a really good card that's mm. really helped me later on in the game yeah but then other times I've done that and I've ended up with like a gold of one or something like that and yeah it's, it's not was, always a, a big help yeah there were some times when I was waiting to until the last card of mm. the five that I was going to draw and that was going to be the one I was going to keep because then you've got no choice at mm. that point but and then it was like a a blue four or something yeah. and I thought oh great glad they did that yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I mean ov- overall what, what was your final thoughts on this game Richard I think it's a very nice small game um, I think a lot of people would play it mm. I think sometimes it's a little bit like a Euro game but not quite there's no like fighting or anything there's not really mm. anything that family members might object to if you got it out. Very family friendly, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that's what I kind of think. So I think it's a nice, safe game that you could um, bring out in a variety of circumstances. Like if you had people round, it doesn't really matter um, who they are. I think they would they would at least play it. Yeah. And um, they would most probably enjoy it. And how many players? Is it two to four? Two to say? four. Yeah, I think I think that's a nice number as well. I mean, obviously there are some light games that include more players, mm. but I think if you if you did have four people, then I don't think there's going to be many circumstances where people wouldn't do this. I mean, you're going to have time, and people are going to have the inclination. I think. And I do, as I say, I think it, it looks nice. Um, the cards, the artwork, and everything is all very nice, and I like the theme of it. I know some people haven't particularly liked the theme, but I think that people have rethemed the game. <laughs> so I think there's a, a version, I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it, a version that someone made where instead of like having the monasteries and the old documents, you are a comic book store and you're trying to get the rare comic books. Right. And I would definitely prefer this, but yeah, I can see it. I think people might like I that. would. I think I would like the other one, but actually, I'm quite happy with this the way it is. I quite <laughs> like it because this, to me, is quite unique. It's not I, off the top of my head. I couldn't really think of another game um, in this same mold. I mean, the only one that comes close, and it's again because it's to do with documents and books, is Paperback, and that as a game is completely different to this. It's just like well, it's just mildly theme, connected it? by by a theme it's and there's just not that's yeah there's thing. just not many games out there that are about books and old documents and you know boring old me i do like those things so this is something that for me i'm quite pleased to have i mean we played it as you said with ryan on the sat on the saturday evening that's at the hotel yeah. and and with him and on the sunday we were look, going around looking for a copy at the expo yes and that's where we then picked up from the same store that had this because uh, we went to several stores and they didn't have it. We found it. I thought it was funny that you were going around trying to find Biblios when uh, <laughs> before people weren't buying it so much. Yeah. And then... It um, became popular. It's, yeah, so, somehow it became popular. Um, mm. It was bar night gaming that made it popular. Yeah. Um, but then we also found another game which we'll be talking about um, on our next segment of the Quest Report. Multi-Universum. Yes, because from the we same also, store. We did a quest of Universum as well, so yeah. we have to talk about that. So, multi Universum, sorry. So, we um, hope you en- enjoyed this. Definitely want to check out Biblios, a light, f- family friendly game. Um, we enjoyed it. We hope you do too. Yeah, save the books. Farewell, Quester. To find out about other productions by the Middlesome Meeples, then check out our channel or rendezvous with us at middlesomemeeples.com. Until next time, Quester, farewell and keep thine axe sharp.